Hey guys, Andy here with Camera Cravings, and today I want to answer a question, is the Hero 9 worth upgrading from the Hero 8? Should you be going out and getting one, or should you wait? That's what we're going to try and answer today. And before we get into it, I just want to say that all of the stuff you see in this video is going to be filmed with the Hero 9, and there's clips from the Hero 8 as well, side by sides. But yeah, so anything that's filmed is outside with this Hero 9, so you can get a good feel for the different modes, what this camera can do, what it can't do, the issues that it has with it. And speaking of those issues, the touch screen is a massive one that's a problem that I talk about in the video. Um, it's almost unusable at this point. I'm recording this uh, on the 20th of October, GoPro is meant to be releasing a firmware update for this camera on the 22nd of October or shortly afterwards and I think it's one of the first two or three firmware updates for the camera. I did update it when I received it back in September but GoPro is meant to be resolving a lot of the issues that people have been having with these cameras with that 22nd of October firmware update. So all of what you're about to see is prior to that firmware update. So do bear that in mind. I will try and do an update video to this one once the firmware has been updated and once I'm happier with um, the usability of this camera, because at the moment the touchscreen is really poor. So with that all being said, let's get straight into the video and will join me outside. So let's talk about what's changed with the Hero 9. Firstly, they've added this front screen which is a really nice colour screen that helps you frame up your shots. If you want to take selfie photos, if you're doing like I am, talking to camera, it's just good to have and it should have been on the camera last time. And um, one thing it has done is made the camera a lot bigger. It's wider, higher and deeper and it weighs more now. So it's 100, about 159 grams versus around 124. The, um, the front screen is really good. The one thing I would say is that it is a little bit laggy, particularly in 5K and 4K modes. Um, the frame rate on the screen is, that, is around sort of four to five frames a second. So it doesn't affect your recording. It just means that when you move, you kind of have a bit of a lag with what you're seeing on the screen. So it's not really a big deal, but something to be aware of. The other thing, that has changed is a massive one for me which is they have brought back the replaceable front um, lens cover which disappeared on the Hero 8 and um, yeah for me that's a huge one and I'm so glad they've done that. The other thing that's important with that is having had a look inside and taken it off you can see that actually it's almost it's more like a um, standard camera mount so it looks more like you can mount other lenses onto it and that's because GoPro is releasing the max lens mod for this camera which is like a super wide view which allows you much more of a kind of wide view like the GoPro max and that should be coming out fairly soon um, but obviously it's an additional cost but obviously there's going to be third parties that will bring out things uh, lens covers things like Polar Pro I imagine are bringing out the ND filter sets for these cameras and it just means you don't have to kind of strap it on um, in a weird way like you did with the GoPro 8 so that's definitely an improvement for me I'm shooting 4k 30 currently uh, this camera goes up to 5k that's another big one that they've changed having that extra resolution you might think well you don't really need it on a GoPro but I have found on my 5k iMac when I've compared the two side by side there is quite a big difference in quality and um, you can go up to 5k 30 you can't go into any of the higher frame rates in 5k so no 5k 60 or anything like that um, still no 4k 120 on this camera that will hopefully come in the hero 10 but it's a bit of a disappointment that it hasn't come on this camera other things that this camera brings is uh, hypersmooth 3.0 which is gopro's 
new version of their Hypersmooth, which to be honest, I so far haven't seen a huge amount of difference. I'll show you some clips. Um, the only difference really, it's a little bit steadier. It's a little bit better than it was. And the other thing they've brought is horizon leveling. So when you do this with the camera, you've got horizon leveling on, you don't get that. So I'll show you some side-by-side -side comparisons of the Hero 8 versus Hero 9. But yeah, so there's some big improvements on this camera. The audio, I don't think, is hugely different. They have added a little kind of port bit on the side that is meant to be like a quick drain. So if you've got it in water and you bring it out of the water, it's supposed to make it sound better straight away because the water can quickly drain out of the um, port. Yeah, I'll do some comparison tests with the audio but so far from what I've seen, it doesn't feel like much has changed. So I'm just gonna ride along in the wind because it's pretty breezy out here. And uh, oh, yeah, wind is right into my face now. So if I turn the camera around, can you still hear me? And uh, yeah, how windy is it? because the wind is right in my face and it should sound absolutely horrible. I've got auto auto wind reduction on, on the GoPro. And um, yeah, I've got it on on both cameras. So Hero 8 and Hero 9 have both got the automatic setting, which is better. Is there any difference? Do they both sound awful? One thing I've just noticed, I've been talking to camera for about four or five minutes and the front screen, has now just gone into sleep mode, I assume. Um, it's just completely turned off. So I'm just gonna turn the camera around. And yeah, the rear screen has done the same. I think when the rear screen sleeps, it seems like the front screen sleeps as well. So that's something to note. And battery life is something else that GoPro have said it's improved by 30%. Um, I think it's gonna vary depending on the mode you're in, but I have seen improvements I'll put some figures up on the screen of what I've seen in my testing so far. But I would say most modes you're getting around 30% or more. Some modes up to 50% better battery life. Um, the only thing I'd say the battery life suffers a little bit with is when you're fiddling around in the menus and stuff because you've got the screens um, both on. That means that it does seem to drain a little bit quicker than I had hoped. but yeah overall i think the battery life improvements are are good and the battery is obviously a bit bigger and that's why you're getting better battery life out of it and i assume the processing in this camera has been slightly improved as well the side door the battery door is better the old one was not great and this one has more of a spring loaded kind of clip action uh, the other thing that's really good on it is you can pull it right out so that you can pull the battery out without it popping off. I found on the Hero 8, you used to, it just used to pop off really quickly. Um, and you couldn't actually get it at like a 90 degree angle to get the battery out. So that's an improvement in usability. Um, something that is not an improvement so far in my testing is the touch screen on this. It is absolutely awful. And when I say awful, I mean awful. It's um, I don't know if I've just got a duff unit or if it's this bad on everyone's cameras. I've updated the firmware as soon as I got it out of the box and the Hero 8 is running um, updated firmware, the latest firmware as well. Hero 8 screen was never great, 
even now it's it's still a little bit laggy but the hero 9 screen so far has been almost unusable it's yeah i'll show you some clips of what i mean but it's just been really rubbish to the point where it's a pain actually just filming um, these tests for this video yeah the other thing that's new is because of the larger sensor we've got a 23.5 megapixel um, photo mode on this camera which is quite a big upgrade from the photos that you could take on the old GoPro and there is a noticeable difference in quality particularly if you shoot in RAW and you've got the super photo mode as well and HDR so yeah that's quite a big upgrade so the other thing that GoPro has brought to this camera which I think is really really good is something called hindsight which essentially means the camera is going to record a kind of continuous buffer of either 15 or 30 seconds so say you're waiting for someone to do something spectacular or a particular moment you can put hindsight on and it's going to be recording so you don't miss that moment and what you do is you press record as soon as you see something happening and it will have recorded 15 or 30 seconds prior to that moment so basically it means you're never going to miss that cri critical key moment again the other feature you've got is scheduled capture which is basically going to be able to allow you to tell the camera when you want it to switch on so say you want to capture a time lapse at um, sunrise for example but you don't want to have to get up at five in the morning to capture it well you can set the camera to come on at five in the morning get that epic sunrise and um, you don't have to worry about getting up is this feature something that works well I have tried it out a couple of times and I've had mixed success with it um, once it did work and once it kind of just didn't at all it didn't come on I'm not sure why again hopefully this is something that GoPro will um, just improve when they update the firmware over the next few months and um, yeah I just again it's a it's a feature that I think has real potential and um, just gives this camera more flexibility and I think that's what GoPro's done with this camera it's not a massive massive update compared to the Hero 8 in terms of a lot of the key kind of core video features but I think it gives a lot more flexibility so it gives you a lot more options for shooting so in a similar vein they've also got um, duration capture I think it's called um, which allows you to set a duration that you want the GoPro to record for so anything from like 15 minutes to I think up to three hours and um, again it's kind of just giving you more flexibility so if you want to make sure that the camera is going to turn off after a certain time and uh, not waste your battery or your SD card then again it's just giving you that flexibility so another thing that they've added is Time Warp 3.0 and um, obviously you had Time Warp 2.0 on the Hero 8 3.0 essentially it's the same thing but it adds the ability to and you can pause it and stop it just like this and then we go again press the button and it it goes back to the time warp so um, I'm not really that fussed about this feature but I know some people will love it so the other thing I wanted to talk about was low light and I would say in most scenarios the Hero 9 is better it seems just yeah it seems to be more natural and the Hero 8 had this weird blue kind of color cast in all the shadow areas which I couldn't work out why in some of the scenes but um, I have seen it on other people's videos so it's not just mine right then low light test so we've got the Hero 8 set to 4k 24 frames a second in the wide lens and then we've got the Hero 9 set to 5k 24 frames a second in the wide lens, both have got boost on, all the settings auto, colours GoPro, um, got bitrate high, we've got 
auto white balance and we've also got um, yeah set to wind on auto as well so just outside it's not actually windy but yeah I've just tried to set it <coughs> excuse me I've just tried to set everything to auto so I'm gonna just turn around and walk over into the darkness and then I'm going to gradually walk back towards the light and see which one does a better job. So obviously here I'm lit by this outdoor light and the light coming from the windows. And then how does it do when I'm backlit? How does it do? How does it do when I'm really in the dark here? Obviously it's going to struggle. I've got the max ISO set to 3200. Not that you'd necessarily want that because it introduces a lot of grain, but I just want to give the stabilization the best chance. Shutter speed is set to auto. So, yeah, I just want to see what the difference in low light is, if there is any difference, if one looks better than the other. Low light, it's not a massive improvement, it is a little bit of an improvement. You know, there's a pattern developing here, isn't there? That basically we're getting improvements to everything, it's being refined, it's not it's not a huge jump, but it is an improvement. So guys, I wanted to wrap this video up and talk about what I think about this Hero 9 versus the Hero 8. Do I think it's worth the upgrade straight away or are you better off waiting? I think if you need that front facing screen, then upgrade straight away. I think if not, I would wait for the firmware updates to make sure that this camera is actually going to be what it should be, which is having a responsive touch screen and not as glitchy as it currently is. GoPro seem to release cameras every year that have all these glitches with them and hopefully they will get it all sorted in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, at the moment, there's some great features on this camera. I really love things like hindsight. I love the fact that I was able to um, actually get a couple of clips of myself mountain biking with no one else there, literally by just sort of doing little um, drop-offs and jumps and stuff, um, placing the camera and then tapping the record button after I'd done it. And you got that 30 second clip of me mountain biking. You couldn't do things like that with the Hero 8 or any of the GoPros before that. So that's a big win for me. Another big one is the fact you can now replace this if it gets smashed up. This was a big issue on the Hero 8, which they've now sorted out again. And I like the fact that Polar Pro and others, Freewell, all of those manufacturers are bringing out ND filters and various other lens adapter, adapters to um, Put onto the front of here overall i really like this camera i don't like the fact it's bigger i do prefer the kind of compact size of the hero 8 but i appreciate why it's bigger and heavier um, but yeah at the moment i wouldn't go straight out and buy one because i think they will come down in price but also at the moment i just don't think it's a finished product and that's a shame I wish companies would stop doing this, but it seems to be the norm now where they know they can update it with firmware, so they just get it out on the release date and don't worry whether it's a finished product or not. But apart from that, I'm really impressed with some of the features on here. As you've seen, a lot of it is essentially just a refinement from the Hero 7 and Hero 8. Um, all the hyper smooth stabilization stuff, yeah, it's got better. Yeah, the horizon leveling works pretty well and um, Time Warp 3.0 is a little bit better than the previous version. I like the fact you can stop it and start it, um, but they are all incremental upgrades. I don't think everyone's gonna be rushing out to buy this simply because it is an incremental upgrade rather than a complete um, overhaul. So the other reason to hold off on buying this GoPro is the fact that DJI are starting to come out with new products 
and I think they're due a refresh of the Osmo Action, which was an excellent camera and had a lot of these features two years ago, almost two years ago. So I think they might bring 4K 120 to that camera. And if they don't, I think they will make some big improvements, uh, which will definitely compete with this camera and potentially surpass it. So it may be worth holding off until at least Christmas if you can wait and I certainly wouldn't rush out and buy one if you've already got a Hero 7 or 8. If you've got anything below that, I think this is definitely worth an upgrade straight away. With all that said, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, drop a comment below, any questions you've got on either of these, let me know. I always try and respond to as many comments as I can. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time.